Mr. Huffman, would you like to join us up here? Probably not. Guess not. That might save some time. Does that save some time? I think. Yeah, yeah, it should. It's supposed to. You don't even have to check in, I think. Are you standing for one stand? Are we ready? We're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. This is uh, our regular council meeting, June 18th, 2015. If you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. Dear Lord, we are gathered here tonight to deliberate and vote on important city issues. Please help us be respectful to each other's ideas and opinions and to always vote with the best interests of all, interests of all Canton residents and businesses in mind. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Okay, would like to welcome our guests and visitors. The first thing I'd like to do, certainly, and uh, I'd like to introduce someone that uh, everyone knows, and uh, just like to welcome him on board, Mr. Billy Peppers. We're so glad to have him. Took a while, but uh, he's here now, and he's going to be here for a while. We're well, welcome, and we appreciate you being here and all you've already done this week. All right, I'll entertain a motion to con to approve the. Agenda. Is there any changes? So moved. Have a motion. Have a second. No, I got second. some changes. Sir. Oh, okay. I got two changes, okay. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, Just the part on the um, under new business. Uh huh. I am not prepared to do that. So if you could take that off the agenda. We'll put that for later. Okay. Yeah, number nine A. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'd like to make some comments concerning some old business, and that would be on blight. Okay, just add that to old business? Please, sir. We'll make that uh, I under old business, uh, your comments on blight. Okay. Okay. Any, any Anything else? We had a motion. Did we have a second on? Second. Second. Uh, any other questions or discussion or changes or anything? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. You also have in your agenda package the uh, minutes from the June 1st special call council meeting as well as the minutes from the June 4th council meeting. Are there any changes or con corrections to either of those? Motion to approve. Have a motion to approve. We have a second. second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Okay, and uh, we're now to the 10 minute public input period. And we, I believe, we had two, two individuals uh, Mr. Thomas Weaver. Council, uh, I'd like to address you this evening. I'll keep my statements as coincise and succinct as possible. Mr. Weaver, could you mind? Oh, yeah, push that. that up a little bit. Get a little, little, little closer. closer. Okay. I'll try to keep my statements as coincise and succinct as possible for the sake of allowing the other speaker to also have an opportunity to, to address Council. Um, over the past few days, I've been in correspondence back and forth with the Office of the City Clerk and trying to keep some irons in the fire for some old business that the City took up last year in November and also with two new issues that are of importance to myself based on legislative acts that the General Assembly has prescribed to yourselves that you must obey and follow. Uh, as of yet, I haven't heard any affirmative action from the city aside from an email that the city is going to take up any of the matters, although the July 1st deadline for the two of the 
matters that I care most about are is, is, is symposium. So I have correspondence here that I'd like to submit to each council member. Um, I would hope that they would read it, and I would ask that members of council uh, take my, seriously my comments, and hopefully that this will come to fruition to be addressed in a future meeting. Uh, as I trust most of you are aware, we, this past November, took up the matter of the school safety zone maps. Now that the land swap deal is completed, I ask that the city council again revisit the issue. The city needs to adopt the new maps for the Bluff Technology Parkway and the revised map of the downtown Canton area, along with finalizing a high school map. I'd be appreciative if the city would do that. Secondly, the city uh, also needs to consider Public Acts 50 and 100 of the 2015 legislative session. These laws have been prescribed to you. It is not optional. It is mandated by the state that you must do certain things. I've outlined all the things in correspondence to and from the office of the city clerk. I would hope that that information has got to you. If not, I'm going to deliver some additional correspondence for you to consider tonight. Hopefully, the city will move forward on an opportunity to revisit its discharge of weapons ordinance. Um, there are certain regulations in there that are no longer legally permissible and that invite litigation. And secondly, in regards to the fireworks issue, um, it doesn't go as far as imposing a legislative oversight as what does the previous mentioned matter, but the city is going to have to vastly reconsider vast swaths of city code in order to comply with that. There are many regulations scattered throughout in the city that are no longer be legally enforceable as of July 1st. I would hope that you would take this seriously because the state of Georgia sure does. I have received positive affirmation um, and have worked carefully with other jurisdictions throughout the county, including neighboring jurisdictions, and all of them have moved forward and placed these items on their agendas and are actually considering it even as early as next Monday and Tuesday. So I would, I would hope that the city of Canton could follow suit. Uh, with that, I will leave uh, these letters, and I ask that each of you be mindful of these state law requirements moving forward. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Jeffrey Allen. Good evening, counselors. I hope everybody is doing well this evening. I am here this evening to advocate for a new political economic system based upon the principles of direct democracy and the economic principles of communitarian control of the local economy. I'm doing so because of the multifarious crises of our society today. We have political crises of a lack of any real representation of local communities and disadvantaged communities. We have an economic crisis of spiraling inequalities in this country. Um, with many different dimensions, and we also have uh, environmental crises, uh, the most prominent of which internationally is global warming. And I certainly hope that the local government here begins to consider this problem, this issue that is going to become a major problem for communities all over the world and also for the United States. And also, I would also like to advocate and reaffirm the principles of nonviolence and peace. And I would like to recommend to the council that you adopt a gun ban and that you pass a resolution uh, to ban all weapons in the United States. And I would also like to quote Dr. Martin Luther King, or actually to paraphrase him, that when we all travel in the darkness and the highway of life, that we all must dim the lights for each other. We must dim the lights of love. And we must, we must take these things into our heart and do the best that we can for each other, for our community, and for the whole world. So I believe that we should be having a town hall meeting tonight and that anybody who wants to vote on some issue that is of importance to them, whether it is an issue brought forth by the council, by the community, by a transnational corporation, by Wall Street, by anybody should be able to vote upon it and should be able to have their say and their voice heard. And that is this real spirit and principle of democracy. And that is all I had to say for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Item 7 on your agenda is the consent agenda. We have uh, a number of items on the consent agenda, and I will read those. And if there's any of those that you would like to be pulled from the consent agenda uh, for further discussion, then we will do that. Uh, item A, approval of LED lighting ordinance amendment. These are items that we discussed in detail at the last uh, at least one meeting, maybe more. Uh, approval of the Planning Commission recommendation for case ZCA 1504-001, Summer Walk Subdivision, to amend Condition 6 to allow for additional front entry garage-style homes. Item C, approval of Atkins to design a plan to resolve stormwater issues on Wooded Mountain Trail for a cost of $35,000. Approval of hotel motel tax budget amendment. Approval of increase of planning commission and zoning board of appeals uh, per diem from 35 to $50. Approval for Georgia Development Partners to uh, make West Marietta stormwater and right of way improvements for an estimated cost of $23,628. Are there any of those that you would like removed? Mr. Mr. Huffman? I'd like to uh, have a discussion on item C. Okay, we'll, we'll pull it off, okay? Any, any others? If not, then I'll entertain a, a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item C. So moved. I have a second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Uh, let's go ahead then and uh, talk about, uh, Mr. Huffman, if you'd like to talk about item C, which is the approval of Atkins to design a plan to resolve the stormwater issues on Wooded Mountain Trail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is not a complicated issue that we have. It's one that's been complicated from a political or from a uh, um, personal issues because of uh, a lot of conversation. But technically, to resolve the issue, it's, it's not that complicated. We employ engineers to help us take care of such pr processes. And I think we have that capability uh, within our own organizations to use our city engineers to resolve this problem rather than spend $35,000 that uh, I don't feel like we need to spend. Uh, the engineers working with the people who would actually do the work, the people that actually do the work probably have the answers uh, in their mind, and I think our city en engineer also does. Uh, between the two of them, I think it's rather, um, I, don't, I don't know what word I want to use. I just don't think we should spend $35,000 and we haven't fixed a thing. All we've done is come up with a plan. Uh, I just, we're spending so much money on consultants and planning and so forth. Uh, we employ these people who are degreed, they have experience, and we need to use them, their expertise for these type of issues. And I, I just don't feel like $35,000 is uh, money well spent. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? If not, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve item C, uh, 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 Atkins, uh, to, to design a plan to resolve stormwater issues on Woody Mountain Trail for a cost of $35,000. So moved. I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. All members voting for the motion with exception of Mr. Huffman. <laughs> I don't think we can on some of these, right? Okay. Well, let me know on which ones we can. Okay. Oh, yeah, happy trails. Okay, I got you. Um, okay, under old business, item A, update of the LCI planning contract, uh, Council Members McGrew and Grant. Yes, as I reported in the last uh, work session, uh, we received RFPs for, from six different firms. Uh, we narrowed the selection down to two of those firms, and we uh, have met with those two firms and interviewed those firms, and an additional uh, uh, Q&A with those firms. We'll be making a final recommendation, and Mr. Patton will be 
presenting a contract in the July work session for the council to approve uh, uh, for to hire the final firm for July, by the end of July. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Item B, update on Northwest Fire Station. Chief, can you help us out there? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I talked to Gary Watkins. Uh, I'm not loud enough. <laughs> Sorry. Is that better? It won't stand up, will it? Is that better? I just hold on to it, Chief. <laughs> yes, start singing. I talked to, uh, to Gary today, and he should have the contract to me by sometime, hopefully tomorrow or the middle of the week next week at the latest. While the contract is still in the process of being completed, he is still doing the design work and is still working forward with the design. So once we get the design in, the, he will be then coming forward with the sketches we'll meet with the county fire chief, uh, and I would assume get it with, to y'all, hopefully the first council meeting after we get it, to let y'all see it, get y'all's blessing on it, and we'll be ready to do any final changes that need to be made, and then they can start completing the design. When do you expect that he will have the design in the next two or three weeks? Yes, or next probably? couple of weeks. Okay, good. It, the question that I have is if once the contract comes in and the city manager approves it, uh, and I'm assuming it's, we're using the same contract the attorney used, is it ready to sign or do you need to get it back before y'all to for approval? But Chief, we, if we need to expedite it, we'll have a special meeting to do so. We don't need to drag our feet on that one anymore. Well, once it comes in, I'll give it to Mr. Pepper. He may actually send it to him. Uh, once it comes in, we'll make sure that he gets it as fast as we can. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. <clears throat> Discussion of the uh, Canton Sanitation roll-off site. Uh, I think we talked about that at the last meeting. We got some information, and I believe we received some additional information about uh, the, uh, I think Melissa provided us with some additional information about the, the days in which most of the uh, garbage was coming in over there, which appears to be Friday and, and Saturday. And I think Saturday was maybe twice as many vehicles coming through on a Saturday than almost than any other day of the week, as I recall. Um, I would, uh, you know, this it's not an easy uh, solution to this thing. We're losing money, but, you know, we're providing a service at the same time. How, how much money are we willing to lose t in order to provide that service? Uh, I think, uh, you know, we also uh, questioned about whether or not uh, maybe we were, the expenses was, uh, the expenses were too high if indeed our charges were in line. If our charges were in line, then for some reason, you know, it can't be, the expenses can't be comparable to other private organizations and them stay in business, you know. So uh, what, I, what I thought I would try to do is to ask a, a couple of council members to really take a close look at this and, and meet and study this and, and come back and uh, give us an idea of what they would recommend. Um, uh, Jack, would you and, and John Russ, John, would you work together on that and, and on the sure. roll-off site and make a recommendation to us? Okay. Thank you. Item D, update on River Green bonds, bond calls. Uh, uh, Mr. City Attorney, do you have any other update on that? Is there anything going on there? The short answer is no. Okay. <laughs> at, 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 I think some of the other surrounding issues that impact that are going to be coming up in the next month or so. Okay. So okay. we'll be able to map out a, a plan of action at that point. Okay. Thank you. Update on the city's east end entrance. Um, we had, uh, uh, Mr. Grant and I met with uh, the city uh, manager and uh, get, acting city manager at that time, I guess it was, Nathan. Um, and. Uh, the public works director to take a look at some of the issues involved in, in putting as this uh, uh, the east end entrance onto the historic downtown loop. You know, we've got the 
entrance down on the, the west end there, but on the east end we need something as you come near the uh, voter registration office. Um, I think that's still a work in progress because there's some issues about the size and we're probably going to have to do some redesign stuff on it in order to uh, to make to make it work right there and it won't be the, exactly the same size or even look the same uh, as it is now as the one on the uh, west end, uh, the one with the sculpture, you know, the cotton miller on it, that's what we're talking about. Uh, but I think it's important, I think it's going to give a, a real uh, attractiveness to coming down to the downtown loop, I think, if, if we get that on that end. Um, Ms. Grant, do you have anything you'd like to add on, on that? Um, no, just some of the items we were looking at, the, sort of the size of the sign, uh, the size of the island and landscaping, and so looking at that and looking at the traffic flow coming from um, Brown Street there and left turns off of Main Street going back right. around North Street and uh, and maybe studying that that a little bit because there seems to be some, I mean, there's some public safety issues there as well. Right. So there's several issues uh, involved in this thing. So, but but it's my understanding we, we did budget this year that we can we can move forward with with this project, and I'd like to see this uh, move as, as much as we can as quickly as we can with it. But we want to do it right too. You know. So, all right. Um, discussion of the Canton smoking policy. You know, we had a, a, a lady last meeting, I believe it was the last meeting, came in and, and uh, was, was concerned about the smoking policy here that we have. And I, quite honestly, I think the one that we have was adopted quite a long time ago, and it, it uh, it's pretty much conforms with, uh, looks like state policy or something that they have. But uh, the, one, the one factor I see there that, you know, could potentially be altered is the distance from that door. Uh, and right now, from a, the entrance to any business, you've got to be at least 15 feet away. Um, I think that's something that basically, you know, we could consider doing it, doing something there. But uh, the council have any interest at all in, in taking a closer look at that? Or are there, if, are there any changes that you'd like to see in, in that? Um, I think one of the problems with distance, I mean, even if you, if you make it 30 feet away or 50 feet away, if someone is smoking in your direct path to the front door or the door you're trying to get in, you're still going to have to pass through them. So I don't know if you make it 30 feet at a right angle or something away from the front door, but somehow you have to really consider the path that someone takes to get to the door that's not smoking, doesn't want smoke blown in their face. I truly am extremely sensitive to uh, cigarette smoke. If someone lights up in a room 50 or 100 feet away from me, I can smell it, and I don't like it. So uh, I, I really sympathize with this lady and certainly would like to see if there isn't codes around the country that have addressed this issue, and, can, and maybe we can figure out some way to not make people, if they have to smoke, they have to smoke, but, but they don't have to interfere with someone else's right to enter and exit buildings or whatever. So I, I would certainly like to see that change. Maybe, uh, maybe we could ask our city manager to take a look at what other jurisdictions do and whether or not we are basically in line with them or if they have something that might even work better. Did you do that? Okay, great. Anyone else on that issue? Yeah. Okay. Jack, I'm sorry. Um, you know, we've had this policy in place for, for quite a while, and I always thought it was about 25 feet, but maybe it was 15. But um, I don't, I have not, in a lot of the, the actual places I've been, like, you know, restaurants up on Riverstone and over Marketplace, I've, uh, I'm sort of like John. I've, I've seen a lot of people really close to the door and no one's saying anything to them other than if someone is allergic to it or yeah. done them. And we, we're not enforcing it that I see a lot, uh, you know, and I don't know if it's because we don't know if it's 15 or 25 or what, but, but um, I've had several people mention it when I was out, out eating, and, and I'm allergic to it too, so I'm, yeah, I have a hard time. Yeah, well, the ordinance is 15. I okay. went through the thing here, and yeah. it is 15. I, I know some of them do have 25. I've, I've been... Uh, 
Mr. Huffman. Yeah, I, I, I see many uh, organi uh, places of business where they step out into the rear of the building rather than the entrance of the building to do their smoking. You know, uh, why not let's just ask that they uh, step to the rear or put an ordinance that they step to the rear rather than the entrance. Unless they have an entrance like on Main Street and North Street. Oh, well, that's, but uh, the North Street, you got very few people. Yeah, that, that'd that be an unusual situation, but that would resolve a lot of the complaints is to move it to the rear, not only from uh, people, going, uh, customers coming in and out, but it also uh, moves some of the trash to the rear where it should be. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rush? Um, okay, I think the one difference would be uh, uh, employees can be kind of directed to smoke in the back of the building. That's an easy one, but I think where you got a real difficulty is asking someone to step to the rear of the building when they're a customer. That's that's a tough one. So that's a real challenge. Maybe maybe Billy, you'll come up with. It. Well, I think so if you got if you got the employees to the rear, that you yeah, probably I think that helps a, bu you've, a bunch. You've, yeah, I think you've you helped a, a yeah, great yeah, deal. Yeah, I think that's true. Let's see what you find, Billy. Yeah. Thank you. Because most of the smoking, actually, it, it is employees is what it is. They come well, out on the well, sidewalk. Well, they, yeah. you know, okay. yeah. All right, let's go to the next next item of update. Mayor. <laughs> May I? That thing's lit totally up. <laughs> Yes, you may. Go ahead. Well, thank you very sorry. much. I'm sorry. I mean, I kind of was ignoring those lights since so many are left on anyway. So I feel ignored. <laughs> You've been ignored. Okay. I've been a, a victim of the cigarette smoke in the very recent past. My husband and I were dining outdoors, and people were smoking just eight, ten feet away from us, and so we had to go inside. It was most unpleasant right in front of the no smoking sign on the pole is where the people were smoking. And when we went inside, they took the tables and even closer to the no smoking sign. I'm curious, whose responsibility is it to enforce the no smoking? Is it a matter for the proprietor or the police? What is the proper chain of enforcing this ordinance? I would assume it was code enforcement officer. I okay. could be wrong, though. And also downtown, um, there to be 15 feet from an entrance, you pretty much have to go into the middle of the street to smoke. Well, it, that's if you go straight from the entrance. I mean, you can go. In other words, someone could come out of the snug there, and they could walk, you know, up almost to the corner. Of, uh, uh, of the old Jones building up there, up the street, and they would be 40, 50, 50 feet anyway away from the entrance of that one anyway. Mm -hmm. But they might be within 20 feet of the entrance of the Jones building. Of course, nobody in there anyway. But uh, I, think, I think they could get further away than 15 feet, even if you had to walk two stores down and go halfway to the next one, you know. And you, you might be, have to get 35 or 40 feet to, to be legal for 20. But, uh, you know, I think it's something we ought to look at possibly extending that at least a little bit and see how it goes. Mr. Grant? I think in the, in the interim, I think we do have some new businesses, new ownership downtown. Um, and I, I have witnessed, you know, some of the business employees smoking in front, right in front of their businesses. Oh, yeah. So it may be a good idea to inform or just send a new memo along with the smoking policy out to those to all downtown businesses just to inform them of the smoking remind them of the smoking policy i think i think that would be a good idea to start with i really do and and you know there's at least one of the restaurants or so where one of the benches is just really close to that front door and a lot of them while they're waiting or just sitting out there on the bench will smoke out there so they're they are really closer than they, they ought to be okay. uh mr huffman thank you mr mayor um I'd like uh, Mr. Dyer, if he wouldn't mind, to uh, give his opinion on Ms. McGrew's question, whether that, who is the enforcer of such codes. And then after his comments, I think that uh, whatever he says, that maybe we should put something out uh, in the press as well as a mailing to the 
businesses that are here in Canton and just a restating in order to bring their attention to it. If we're not inspecting it and not doing a good job of it, then uh, we can expect that there's going to be some violations or some areas that are in question whether they are meeting the requirements or not. But uh, I, I think we could take some steps immediately, even with the present code. If we change it later, that's another thing. But Mr. Dyer, if you would mind, who do you think is responsible? I think that something like the distance requirement would be a police issue because it's not a design question. It's not a, you don't cite the store owner, you cite the person actually smoking. So um, some of the some of the smoking ordinance might be a code enforcement, meaning because it's where a business has to set up a certain way. But um, I mean, the ordinance is about uh, not smoking, so the violator is the person smoking. So I think that's a police issue. Okay, Ms. McGrew? And I failed to mention that because there were no receptacles, there was cigarette litter on the ground. And that's also a big issue, is littering town. And, and I think that has been an ongoing issue because if we get the business owners to place the receptacle in a certain place, that helps a little bit. Um, but then you end up, everybody congregating there, so. Okay. Well, Mr. Mr. Allen. Mr. Mayor, could we not add? I'm sorry. Well, well, just I wanted to mention as far as making receptacles available, <coughs> over the years I watched, we used to have receptacles on Main Street, and I watched most of them burn <laughs> uh, because people would use them as trash cans and they'd wind up on fire. Yeah. Uh, so that becomes an issue also. <laughs> could, could we not, uh, as a project for the city uh, put something out to the to the businesses to remind them of their responsibilities to police that I mean that in itself will help some to bring their attention to what the code is uh, I mean would our city manager be able to do that or uh, that would that come under our, our chief of police well I think a city manager could actually send something out to these to the businesses, or we could notify them, or in the commercial water bills or something. I'm not sure. You can you can definitely notify people, but at the same time, you have to realize most of these store owners are are, are in there by themselves, and so it's very difficult for them to run their businesses and to police the sidewalks and to make sure their customers know all the things. We just need to do a better job of. Of, of making sure when a new business comes into the city that they understand what our policy is um, as part of the, an orientation, so to speak, for new businesses. And that we also make sure that, uh, that, that the public has some awareness of what we consider to be uh, a courtesy uh, in smoking distances from entrances. If we don't inspect on a regular basis or some type of regularity, the codes, the ones that are our citizens are coming and speaking to the council. If we don't inspect it or reassure or reestablish what these codes are, they generally start to waver from it. We need to remind them. I mean, we do it on alcohol. They're very cognizant of what the alcohol laws are. So uh, let's, let's be a little bit more proactive on this issue because it is an issue with uh, many of the smokers. I don't think anybody here on the council, and I don't know of anybody out there in the uh, audience that really uh, enjoys the smoke. And I, I don't want to tread on their rights, but at the same time, I don't want them treading on ours either. So I, I just like it to see us be a little more proactive. Mr. Rust. This is really a burning issue, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, we've created a kind of an interesting catch-22 situation, in my opinion, here, because we've banned smoking in these restaurants, so the people that do want to smoke after or before they have a drink or dinner or whatever, they have to go outside. Now, the proprietor certainly wants to have some sort of a receptacle for the butts so they don't get thrown all over the place. Another problem. So where does he put the receptacle? S Snug is a good case in point. 
the only place he can put it is in the middle of the street to be in compliance 15 feet away or on somebody else's property. Not a good idea either. Now, it happens to be the Jones building is vacant, so that's a little bit different, but it's, it's a logistics problem. Where do, you, where do you put these things? It's, it's a very interesting problem. So, uh, Billy, that's an interesting, you, you have a solution to that one? Well, part of the issue is specifically in downtown, they're not placing it on any of their property. They're placing it on public property because those sidewalks belong to the city uh, and to the citizens. So uh, what we could do in that instance is identify locations downtown that do meet the, the letter of the ordinance for the placement of receptacles. But again, you know, if you've got a, a private property owner and they're trying to place it, they're going to try to place it in a proximity to their door, especially if they're going to the expense of buying it. Um, and, and likely they're not getting permission from the city to place it anywhere on the sidewalk. Could, the could we as a city have receptacles and put, we could put them up and then we could control where they are? It, it, you know, it's a sanitation related issue, of course. We, we have garbage dis things out there, so it's the yeah. same thing. I'd rather have a, uh, something to put it in than have butts all over the street. Well, and, and, and to what uh, Councilman Yawn was saying, there, there are specific receptacles that are designed just to deal with both trash and, and to deal with cigarettes that haven't been put out. And there's, I mean, there's a whole, whole list of things that you can go through. There's an expense related to that too. So if that's something the council would like for us to look into, we can definitely price some of those and see, uh, see if we've got some places to put those around. Okay. And we, and we can also encourage it in private developments moving forward uh, you know, if this is an issue uh, that is as part of developments, maybe there's an opportunity for those to, uh, those developments to place them as they're building at the same time as part of their infrastructure. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I think it was a valid uh, concern that the young lady had that came before this council at the last time, and she was very sincere about it. So I think we need to uh, we need to respond in some some way to to that request because it's a it definitely a valid valid point and and uh, we need to we need to either s decide if what we have is quite adequate and maybe we just need to do better at enforcing or we need to maybe change the ordinance to uh, to reflect greater distances or, or changes in ordinance but anyway you'll get it back with us at some point here I'm sure thank you all right next item <coughs> Update of um, uh, Prominence Point request for city acceptance of streets. Um, we we met with uh, some of the individuals uh, uh, representing the uh, Prominence Point homeowners, and basically, what uh, there there are several issues involved in this. Uh, I'm talking about uh, you know the condition of the streets, uh, condition of the stormwater drainage uh, system, and uh, fact that uh, there are water lines under those streets and they're not city water lines and they don't they get actually Cherokee County water so there's several issues that have to be resolved so what I <clears throat> what I would like to do is uh, uh, Ferris if, if you and uh, Mr. Rusk would take a close look at that and and report back uh, to the council uh, any recommendations or thoughts that y'all have regarding this I think we need to we need to approach it from that standpoint uh, because it, 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 it's, it's not a, a simple a solution as maybe we've had it in the past because there are several issues involved with it. Anyone have any other comments on that? Okay. Approval of Happy Trails Settlements uh, Agreement. Uh, I think everyone is aware what uh, this involved, which was the uh, a variance on a sign uh, size of a, a uh, monument sign uh, and the removal of a burned out house on the same property. Do we have, do I have a motion to approve that settlement agreement? So moved. So moved. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Were we supposed to vote on that one? Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's do that. We need to, we need to, we need to, the practice has been so long since we were in here, I'm not sure everyone remembers how to vote. 
Okay, uh, if, we, if everyone's ready to vote, we have the motion in the second. Go ahead and, and uh, cast your vote. Okay. Voting has ended and it looks like it was uh, unanimous. That is right, isn't it? That's the way that's set up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Huffman, you wanted to talk about blight. That's old business. Oh, my. <laughs> you bear with me. I'm going uh, to read part of it and then part of it I'm going to fly by. And, uh, on June 6th, we hosted a, a cleanup day at City Hall for citizen re uh, residents to use free of charge. Residents were able to dispose of their large items without a fee. Residents bought sofas, toilets, old furniture, grills, and several other large ticket items. The event allowed us as a city to inform residents of the items waste management will take at the curb. Uh, many of the residents have no idea of the, of the, the process and how waste management will serve them. So. Uh, this was an opportunity to get that message out to them. To read further, we provided them with the information as well as the contact information. In other words, how to uh, call and, or email, and whatever, or go online to schedule a, a special pickup for uh, items that are large that would not be normal. It was very well received. This also promoted the citywide initiative to clean up. We've had a, percent, a percentage of people that were outside of the city limits, and so we expected that to happen. And, and uh, the people there, and Camille, and uh, uh, Camille just just done an outstanding job with this, uh, working with Waste Management, who's a tremendous partner of our city, uh, Vic Knight. And, and so they they were able to work through this, and. Um, they're hoping to get the money to fund this uh, fund a July 18th uh, or August 8th. It will keep up with the update, and we will also be starting a block cleanup program. In other words, this was citywide, and it was received very well. We put four 30-foot dumpsters out behind the city, and there were four more over on Ridge Road. We filled all eight of them filled all eight of them. Probably could have filled more. That type of stuff is usually sitting on the side of a, of a, of a build of a home or in the front on the porch or nowhere, anywhere on the property that we're not going to be discarded because the people that have those items are not going to pay $34, $35 to come and dispose of them. They're just not going to pay it. So what do they do with it? They let it sit there, or they're going to take it and put it wherever they can discard it, which is not what we want. So Camille and Vic Knight of Waste Management have decided to work on a block-by-block -block, uh, type of situation. It's to place one of those 30-foot dumpsters in a particular area where that type of um, situation is conducive for a, uh, a neighborhood cleanup. With that said, I want to thank some people and groups that have helped. You just don't realize how many people have been involved in this. Camille, she works diligently to put these things together. Camille, if people don't know who Camille is, she's sitting right over here. And she is the one that does, does a lot of the work. She is the one that schedules and works with Vic Knight of Waste Management. Our um, Canton Police Department, we now have right now two code enforcement people. We have just had 11 homes, uh, I can't call them homes, 11 uh, buildings taken down, two of them just this week up on Marietta Road, that have been taken down because of blight. These were entrances into our city that we're so proud of. 
that are absolutely a, a disgrace to our city. Now, they are gone. Now, we focused on them because they were in, coming into the entrance. Now, we have many more that are out in the neighborhoods. I want to thank the Ledger and the Cherokee Tribune. I don't think we would have been as successful, or Camille and Waste Management would have been as successful had it not been the publication of this event. I also want to thank Jerry Cooper, our county manager, and his marshals. They have gone out because some of these properties were actually on the records as Cherokee County properties and not city properties, although driving into the city, you would think they were city properties. So 11 houses have been removed. There are others that are in the process. They have been cit cited. Citations have been issued. And we were moving forward. Uh, the cleanup is continuing, and we're bringing focus. We're bringing focus to this effort. Camille received a phone call today from one individual that was very disturbed about the fact that his property was cited. Well, that's exactly what we're looking for, is that the properties that have been around for many, many years and have been going on and have not been cleaned up, we want to bring the attention to, that, to those properties and get this city cleaned up so we can be as proud of our neighborhoods as we are proud of our downtown. Uh, this is really uh, a start. Uh, there's been years of accumulation of, of sofas and refrigerators, et cetera, et cetera, and deterioration of buildings. There have been years of this going on. It will take a continued effort, a continued effort from all of the people above and our council to continue to bring efforts to put uh, this in the forefront so we can be proud of what we have in our city. Uh, code enforcement and then our citizens uh, are being made aware of the free app that they can put on their phones called See, Click, and Fix. You can go on that app. It goes directly to the city of Canton. You can take a picture and you can download it and send it to the city. You can send it with your name or you can send it anonymously. And that's what happened with this earlier th situation I mentioned, that the owner was very disturbed that his property had been picked out. Well, that's exactly what we want. We want the property owners to take responsibility to see that the renters, if they are renting or uh, if they are on the homes for whatever the reason, that it's their re legal responsibility because they are the one who will be cited not the renter themselves. I want the city council, we're coming up on, on budget time, to be able to support, to continue to support the cleaning up of our city. We mentioned earlier that, uh, that the time, the best time to use our present uh, disposable situations or con uh, containers is probably fr uh, fr Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which works. But the idea of just trying to cut costs, if we could just look at trying to be competitive and offer $35, sure, I'll pay the $35 if I have the need, but there are a lot of people who wouldn't even consider it. And those are the places where we need the most. So we need to get behind Camille and Waste Management to put these canisters out in neighborhoods at certain times and publicize it and support it, not only from verbally and through media, but as well as our budgeting. There was 60, a little over $60,000 that was budgeted this year for blight. This fits under the term blight. And this is something that we can easily use these monies for. Now, there's one last thing, and I'll, uh, I'll shut up. Uh, we all have heard over the news about used uh, old tires. Old tires are a real problem when it comes to disposing of. Uh, they catch water. The water uh, has 
mosquitoes. Mosquitoes uh, have health situations. So Camille has contacted other areas around the, uh, uh, the uh, county as well as uh, metropolitan areas. She has come up with a program. Uh, only needs five days uh, lead time, and we can, through our blight budget, fund these type of situations to have uh, collect tires and get rid of them uh, in an appropriate manner so that we don't have this health hazard uh, running around some of our uh, neighborhoods. So I hope with uh, my comments that uh, uh, the council and the press and everybody will continue, continue to keep this effort moving forward to try to reduce this and make our neighborhoods look as nice as we are trying to make our downtown area. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rust? Well, Hookie, um, you hit on a couple of points. Um, I talked to a guy today, and I've been talking to him for 15 years about tires. Trust me, it's a gigantic national problem, and nobody solved it, but we're working on it. That's one thing. But I do want to rain on your parade a little bit with regard to these gondolas that were put out on June 6th. Forgive me, Camille, because I, <laughs> I was with her from 9 a.m. till 2 o'clock. I got my workout, throwing toilets and grills and everything else in there. But here's an interesting problem that we've created. We invited people to come and dispose of their garbage in our gondolas. And here's an interesting dilemma. You've got somebody with a car load or a trailer load of junk and you say, well, you know what? You don't live in the city. In fact, we had one guy who we refused to take a TV set, and he said, what am I going to do with it? I'm just going to dump it behind uh, Kroger. So what do you do? You know, it's very difficult. But I think my guess, Camille, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that about 30 to 40 percent, and if we'd have taken all the mattresses that, for some reason, people came with mattresses at 145, huge <laughs> Mattresses, they must have been sleeping late and decided they had to get rid of the mattress or something. I have no idea. But if we had taken those, we would have had to shut down earlier because they're so big and bulky. But I think we have to figure out a way to not invite people to come into our city. I, I think what would have happened, Camille, if we had turned away a lot of those people and the catch phrase was waste management will pick this up at your door or at your curbside. They say, well, I don't have waste management. Bingo, you don't live in the city of Canton. And, and the problem we had at that point is we've invited them to our city. You can't selectively say, or maybe you can, you must be a Canton resident. Uh, but I think uh, the volume of garbage that we picked up from people that don't live here was significant. Hookie, I'll be with you in just one second, I know. But no, it, 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 it's not a bad program. It's a good program. It just it troubled me a little bit that we were giving so much to people that they were the least appreciative sometimes to what we were doing for them anyway. And um, they were the ones that came with the toilets and the uh, grills and all the things that were so bulky and took up so much space. So I estimated about 30 for 40 percent of those two gondolas we had. You think 30? Oh, okay. It just, by volume, Camille, it just seemed like it was a lot. But at any rate, I think we just have to figure out, I don't, I love the fact that you want to go into the community, put a gondola in the community, and then we'll clean up that community. I, as I was listening to Hookie talking about this roll-off site, and I'm a big proponent of keeping that no matter what it costs, but if we only opened it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, this poor guy that sits there all week long and has two people come in most of the week per day come in, maybe we could send him out as a scout and he could determine where that gondola should go, take some pictures, and we would know exactly where we want to put the gondola over the next six months. This is going to go here, this is going to go there, because I think that's a great idea. That, that puts you out in the community. Then you know you're picking up the garbage in Canton, Georgia. not and people with Canton addresses think they can dump into our waste management site. And I'd rather put it there than have them dumped in our communities. But it is a problem, and we have to just figure out a way to do it. 
and not deny our residents the right to, or the opportunity to do what you created. And thank you so much. She worked very hard. But, uh, pardon? Yes. Um, thank you. I'm sorry. Sir? Okay. That was, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. Shoot. Um, we just started. I think that uh, if we continue with some programs as we go, that the amount might decrease. But the unfortunate thing is the borderlines or the the uh, lines between a county and the city is so juggled that you can drive down the road. One one building, uh, one home is county. The next building is city, and, and a representative of that would be Hospital Road. You can drive up and down that road, and you don't know which one's which, and I'm not sure they know unless they look at the tax bill. But um, it still is a reflection on the city of Canton because when you drive in there, you assume that is the city of Canton. And, and so we, we, we need to be a little bit tolerant of that until we, we get this thing cleaned up. It does, though, John, uh, th I think lends the, to the opportunity, because I think Jerry Cooper was very receptive and he's responded in like, is that maybe we should take su such programs to the county and have them join us in trying to clean up because they've got their own set of problems. Now theirs would be much bigger than ours, but maybe they could start helping us a little bit so we can make our city what we want it to look like. We're spending money and we're doing a lot of great things for downtown, but it's our neighborhoods. It's our neighborhoods is where the problems are. So uh, I just think that we need to be patient and continue to move forward even at the cost if you know that that's sixty thousand dollars and that was put into the budget for for blight we haven't had to go to legal i don't think bobby have we to spend any of that money yet but um we we can spend that money we've been easy with it by issuing citations we're getting these houses torn down and that's a great thing. Now, at sooner or later, it's going to be more difficult on some of the uh, houses that are maybe more questionable, or the citizen wants the property owner wants to fight us a little bit that we might have to do that. But that's another year. So uh, let's just keep the keep our heads down and keep moving forward and doing some programs to help clean it up. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Russ. I. Uh, Hookie, okay, I, I know you were there, but when we went a year and a half ago up to Barnsley Gardens with the, all the county commissioners, Buzz Aarons at that meeting uh, promised to do something about blighted houses. It took them about a year, but they started coming down. We, they beat us to the punch. They got, they, they got some down before we did, but I think you're going to find a, co a group of county commissioners that are going to be very, very receptive to working with us on almost anything. So. That's a door that's been opened wide, and we're going to take advantage of it on that issue and many others. Thank you. Okay, moving along. Uh, city manager's report. That's one special recognition. Mayor and Council, um, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Mr. Patton and Mr. Crosby to come up here if they will. I have two things in my report tonight. This is the first. This is the first thing on the report tonight, and it's a good thing. Um, anytime you have a staff person within the city that's recognized by their peers as being the leader statewide, it, it is definitely worth recognition. And um, I, I'll let Mr. Patton really uh, talk about what's happened here, but this is something that the city should be very proud of with Mr. Crosby. Thank you, Billy. Mayor, council members, it's uh, my honor to uh, present to the city council, I hope you will recognize Mark Crosby, Canton's building official, the Building Officials Association of Georgia presented Mark as the building official of the year for the state of Georgia, 2014. 
Mark was hired and came to the city of Canton and created the building inspection program from the ground up. At the time Mark came to the city, unincorporated Cherokee County was providing inspection services for the city. Mark worked with city council to adopt all of the codes, hire staff, and uh, bring a building inspection program to the city. His tireless efforts, not only for the Building Association of Georgia, City of Canton, led to this recognition. Mark continues to this day after 15 years of service with the City of Canton in uh, obtaining additional certifications. He's moved over into fire certifications. He is a master code professional through International Code Congress. He has won, the last time I checked with ICC, there are only 823 master code professionals worldwide in the city of Canton has one of them. All right. Congratulations. Therefore, he cannot retire. Well, along with all my other duties, I'm a field inspector these days. We have so much going on, so I apologize for the attire. But I didn't know this was coming tonight. But thank you for the accolade. Thank you, Mark. Congratulations again. And, and, and okay. I, I do have one other item, Mr. Oh, Mayor. I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. Uh, during the uh, transition over the last couple of days, we had an issue that popped up um, related to our uh, to our sanitary sewer and an emergency item that, that came to us. Um, and I'm going to ask Mr. Hatavian to come up here for a minute. Basically, we have an, an issue um, as it relates to Center Street uh, with with a sewer uh, related project. It falls dollar wise under the under the need for a bid, uh, but rather than bringing the item to council and asking for ratification on an emergency expense, uh, my preference was to bring it to you here and 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 let you know about the item during a regular meeting as it's come up. What we have is um, <clears throat> some of the older sewers that are pretty much root infested, causing blockages and sewers to back up into people's homes and spill out over man through manholes and whatnot. Um, this particular one, we actually have sewers running underneath homes. And so the plan is to do a little bit of rerouting, put in a new sewer, and, and address all the uh, the problems. It's, uh, I believe, one hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars to put in about three hundred and fifty feet of sewer, five manholes, a couple. Of, I mean, one of them being a drop manhole, reconnect some service lines, and uh, you know, just typical stuff with old sewers. So. Okay, but now, what are you asking? Are you asking for this to be an emergency, declared an emergency? It's, it's an emergency in in terms of you know trying to keep raw sewage off the ground and and out of people's homes. So yeah. And uh, who who actually is going to be doing that? Uh, J and M Constructors. Are they on the own demand mm -hmm. group? Yeah, yeah. They done. They do a lot of work for us. Uh, you, uh, What's the name of them? J and M. Oh, okay. So there's no. Uh, is there design work to be done? No. No. no it's just contractor. Mm -hmm. So do we have own demand contractors? I didn't realize we had. Well, you had engineering firms, but yeah. I didn't know we had contractors. It, it's it's more of a for emergencies we call them, and they they will they will jump for us. Okay. I mean. All right. If go ahead. I just had one question. How big an emergency is this? I mean, are, are you delaying fixing this to get our approval? Um, no, the only thing we need to get right now is uh, right of entries because they're running through people's yards. But I mean, normally you would just go out and fix this. Normally and, we would. Yeah, we would right. Go I mean, yeah. you're not going to, it sounds like a pretty serious problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Thank you. If I could just clarify that, I, I think sometimes that if it's a true emergency, they just go fix it. They would then come and ask you to ratify it. 
after the fact. Sure. I mean, the city manager felt like because we're in a meeting that he might as well tell you about it ahead of time rather than doing that, fix it and tell you about it afterwards. And so therefore you could vote on it and just direct them to do it. Okay. I'd much rather be proactive if we can instead of having to come back and explain what we did, letting people know what we're doing right now. Uh, and I'm sorry to catch you all off guard. The sewer was very timely then because it was right around the meeting. Otherwise, somebody had to wait two weeks. We don't, we don't want to do that. So you're going to go ahead and fix it in the future and then just come to us if it's in between meetings or something like that? I will so note that moving forward. Good. So what... what <laughs> you still got to tell me what you want what you want us to do well i mean you you could go ahead and vote to make the to make the repair or we could wait and bring it back and you could ratify it i don't see a reason why we don't meeting. go ahead and just uh, uh, vote uh, for an emergency i make a, i make a motion we approve second as an emergency as an emergency I have a motion and a second any other questions or discussion if not those in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed no you got it thank you thank you Okay. Uh, anyone have anything else? If not, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, real estate and litigation. So moved. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed no? Okay. We will not be coming back out to vote on anything after uh, we adjourn the executive session. You're not going to vote on anything?